this lighting is successful. Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder blur. Yes, this is a recorder, but we're gonna get to that in a second. Welcome back to Team Recorder and I'm continuing the quarterly tradition of doing my seasonal favourite. Very exciting announcement. In a couple of weeks, Team Recorder will be one year old. I'm planning something, but for that I need something from you. Please comment with your favourite piece of recorder music. As this video comes out, it is just about December, so I'm going to talk about the past three months and what have been my autumn favourites. But everything kind of recorder related. <laughs> if you're not a recorder player, you should watch anyway because I quite like to have some more views. Let's get started. I'm going to start off today with my plastic and pear wood Mollenhauer Dream Soprano recorder. I actually use this recorder now for teaching. I like to have a separate recorder for teaching than the one I use for concerts. It means I can save the ones for concerts a little bit. It means I have less qualms about just giving this to a kid and being like, yeah, sure, try it out. And a lot of my students also have this one, so it's really helpful for playing together. nice instrument. In general, I love the Mollenhauer Dream Recorders. I also use an alto one, you can get them in tenor, and the fully wooden ones are very good quality. I like the ones with the plastic head because you can also wash them. And sometimes I do make my students go into the bathroom and wash their recorder because it's full of cake. They know they're not allowed to do that, but you know, seven year olds are seven year olds. Yes, I think I've said everything. I've said everything, that's it. My other favorite recorder that I've been using a lot this season is my C Bass Petzold recorder. For any of you watching this and thinking, is that a recorder? Yes, it is. I do a video all about the Petzold family here. Basically, I love the C bass Petzolds. I feel like they're small enough to be really agile and you can play very kind of virtuosic lines, but they still have a very beautiful tone. You can be really melodic and you can make all of those crazy contemporary sounds. playing on this. I play in my pop band called Jabawa and there we play a lot of lines on the bass. I will play you something but on its own it sounds like and I've had quite a few improvisation gigs so I've been improv improv uh, improvising on this lovely thing. If you've seen my previous videos you'll know that on my pet sword which is a slightly large slightly which is a larger size I had the keywork redone so it's a bit softer and I had the gaskets redone the kind of connections between the different parts so that um, there are no air leaks anymore I still have to get that done on my C base so those are the recorders I've been playing a lot these three months aside from 30 other ones. I'm gonna share one of my all-time favorite pieces with you. This is one that I've been performing for the past few years with my trio Axolot. That piece is called Le Ré au Soleil by Johannes Ciconia, and this is a piece from the uh, 13th century. 13th? Basically, it's a canon in three voices. Each voice plays the same line but in a slightly different speed or proportion. So one voice plays da 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 and another voice plays da 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 and another da 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 so It's the same melody weaving in and out at slightly different speeds and it's really trippy and it's 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. In September we performed in a festival in Germany and we performed this piece as a live installation. That meant that we played the same piece for an hour over and over and over again while the audience lay on the floor or danced around or followed us around the room. And we played it in a big cathedral and it was really special. I'm just gonna play a bit of the recording of us performing it right now. Another reason I'm mentioning this is because it's a really great piece for you to try as well. The actual notes themselves are very, very easy, but the rhythmic putting together is really a challenge, but it's a fantastic ensemble piece. I will leave the link down below in the description, like everything else. It's early music, so you can find it open source at IMSLP. Other music I've really been enjoying. I finally got my hands on a copy of the Baroque Anthology by Peter Bowman and Gudrun Haynes. There are actually four volumes of this graded according to difficulty. So the volume four, which is the one I bought, is grade seven to eight, but if you start at book one, that's a lot easier. And it's basically a selection of really great Baroque pieces with CD accompaniment. And this CD accompaniment is really good quality harpsichord and recorder. In book four, you just have a really great selection of all kinds of German, French, and Italian Baroque. Really nice stuff to get your teeth into. And it's a good way of playing with accompaniment if you don't have an accompanist in your area. One thing that I really like about this is that for every piece in the book they give a whole practice explanation. So ideas about articulation and ornamentation and background information, I think it's, it's really valuable. My only picky point with these books is that on the CD the recorder is also playing all the time. In an ideal world, I would love to have a CD with the choice of playing with or without a recorder so that you could play with just the continuer on your own. I have the feeling here like the CD is intended more as a reference, whereas I would also love to use it as like a play along thing. I'm a big fan of play along. I don't know if that's business wise viable, but that's my feedback. And other than that, if you are into Baroque music, definitely go and order yourself book one, two, three, or four according to your level. And another book that I've been really into these past months is a new book by Bart Spanhover and it's called The Finishing Touch to Practicing. Now, Bart and I got in contact with each other because um, the way we work and the way we approach practice is very similar. So if you are enjoying the way I demonstrate exercises and stuff on this channel, I think that you'll really like his book as well. He really breaks down how to practice, how to structure it, also linking it to emotion and motivation and the musicality as well as the technical side. For example, patterns of notes in Baroque music, how to approach that and kind of skeletons of practice exercises and how you can develop them yourself. Whew, there's a lot in here and it's published by Merck and this is in English but I think it's also in German and Dutch. So as Bart says, this book is all about how you can effectively structure your own practice routine. If this is something you're interested in, especially if you're a music student, get this book. Moving on to what I have been listening to. Now I listen to a lot of recorder CDs because I write reviews for Blockflautis, the Dutch Blockflaut magazine. This past month, for the first time, I had to review a CD of Bach. Normally I write reviews of contemporary music, so I was like, oh, okay, Bach. And I absolutely love this CD. Now I don't have it here because I left it in the car, but it is Bach Sonatas arranged by Jan von Hooker, who is a Belgian recorder player. He's taken five organ sonatas and arranged them for recorder and continuo. And the thing I really like is that he doesn't only stick with the alto recorder and harpsichord, but we also hear the forte piano, we hear different sizes of recorder, different models of recorder, and he really makes this music Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. Like, in my list of styles of music that I listen to in my free time, 
Baroque recorder sonatas aren't really at the top. If I'm honest, sometimes I need a break from the recorder, but I have found myself listening to this CD a lot. Next up in my favourites are actually a couple of YouTube channels that I found. Now, I've been so pleased to see that more and more recorder players are getting on YouTube and the great Dutch recorder player Garel von Steenhoven has his own YouTube channel and he doesn't have that many videos on there at the moment but the videos that are there are brilliant. Um, I'm just showing my laptop here. He also makes kind of informative recorder videos but in a bit of a different style to mine. He made one recently called Making Your Own Recorder Solo a la Bastarda. So that's like taking a piece of ensemble music and arranging your own kind of virtuosic solo out of that music. And the way he explains and describes it is really, really great. So if you're not subscribed to Garl, go over to his channel and subscribe now. Link is in the description below. And then <laughs> this next person, one of you actually wrote to me and told me about him. Um, it's a guy called Eduardo from Rio in Brazil and he has a hundred videos. His channel is called Early Music in a Different Way, Winky Face, and it's brilliant! This guy plays all different early music instruments and he makes these great videos where he is playing all of the different parts but also like he's in a painting or he's in costume or... I can't explain. Uh... So in a really great way, he's mixing early music and comedy. If you don't subscribe to his channel, you should go as well to his and subscribe. Okay, onto a bit more random stuff. So as a recorder player, my hands are on show all the time. However, for as long as I can remember, I've had this really bad habit of picking at the skin around my nails. Um, I don't bite my nails. My nails are very strong and healthy, but the skin around them suffers. I have found a product that really helps me not to do this. It is Lemony Flutter Cuticle Cream by Lush. And this is a really, really rich kind of thick moisturizing cream. I make sure that I just take a little bit and rub it onto my cuticles twice a day and what this does is it heals it in record time and the more healed my fingers are the less I want to pick at them if there's not any kind of sticky out bits then I don't want to pick as much basically it's like self-care the only thing is it's not cheap this pot costs around 14 euros something like that but it lasts a really 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 long time however if you do want something that is a bit cheaper this is very simple but I have also discovered Pure Roll. It's a bit like Vaseline. Um, it really reminds me of this Lucas Pawpaw ointment that my friends from Australia always bring me. Um, however, this is easily available in Europe and this costs four euro. So both of these work for me, 14 euro, four euro. I have one in my bag wherever I go and it's helping me on my lifelong quest to not pick the skin off my fingers because that is Gross. Do any of you do that too? Okay, and we have another kind of beauty product here. As a musician, I'm on stage a lot. I, sometimes I have to look or dress a certain way for a theatre show. I am very unkind to my hair. This is not my natural hair. My hair is naturally very curly and I straighten it quite a lot. And as you can probably tell, it gets very, very dry. I discovered this hydrating hair oil. It's called macadamia oil, and it's just really great. Every time I wash this and my hair is damp, I put a big dollop in my palm and just put it through my hair. And the first time I used it, my hair was so silky afterwards. So I was just like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah, I know if your hair is really dry from styling, the way to help it is to not style your hair with heat products, but um, basically all the beauty products I use are just about moisturising because I live in the Netherlands where everything is grey. And then we've already come to the last thing in my favourites video. In my last video I talked about the importance of relaxing taking time out. I'm going to show you the books that I've been reading this last month. They are the Mars Trilogy 
I've lent one of them to a friend, so I only have two. They're published in the 90s, and it's a trilogy called Red Mars, Green Mars, Blue Mars, about a hundred scientists that move to Mars and make it into a world that humans can live on. It's literally a whole world. These books span 200 years and they go into all of the like science and the weather and the sociology and the politics, everything about moving to Mars. A bit different from playing the recorder but I just like to sometimes be immersed in a completely different world. Uh, ooh! The other thing is, never lend me a book because I literally read them to death. Oh, found a photo of me and my friend at a party. Ah, awesome. That's it for my autumn favourites. If you want to know more about what I've been up to, Twitter is probably the most up-to-date thing. And don't forget to comment with your favourite piece of recorder music down here now. Over here you can click on my face in order to subscribe to my channel and up here YouTube is doing some really cool things. You can click on my previous video which I believe was about vibrato. Thank you for watching and have a great day.